Hi everyone, this is Dr. Mike and this is part five in my six part mini series on how I lost over a hundred pounds without dieting. And as you probably know by now, the weight loss was a byproduct of making life change. So I was improving the quality of my life and the weight loss followed. And that's pretty amazing when you consider that I've had significant weight problems since childhood through adulthood, that I've lost many hundreds of pounds and regained them back and that I've been on just about every diet that's reasonable that you could think of. And I also even had surgery. None of that really gave me any kind of sustained weight loss. So when I decided to make change, it was for other reasons. I just really wanted to improve the quality of my life. And that's why these topics may seem a bit off what you're normally used to when you hear the typical, hey, I took vin vinegar or something and that made me lose weight talk. So today's topic is honesty. Honesty, that's kind of a tough topic. And I would say that I'm a very honest person. I really try to be honest. I don't like lying, it makes me uncomfortable. In fact, I'm an absolutely terrible liar. So I would say overall, I'm honest. But I realized that I, in some areas, was being dishonest. And typically I was being dishonest to those people that were closest to me, including myself. So why would I be dishonest to people that I cared about the most? Well, for a number of reasons. I thought maybe I was protecting them, or I was protecting myself, or I was protecting the relationship, or I was avoiding a fight, or I was avoiding just the mess that would happen if I kind of spilled the beans on a particular topic. So I'm going to give you a couple of examples just to kind of add some credibility to what I'm saying, and then kind of come up with some concluding remarks on this. So this first example is an example where I think I was dishonest with my wife. So I've been married for almost 25 years. And my wife and I have a lot of similarities, but we also have some differences. And one of the differences that we have is our need for order and just sort of lack of clutter. So we're both, I think, within the normal spectrum, but I'm on this end and she's on the other end. I'll tell you, for me, I like countertops to be clear. When dinner's done, I want the dishes washed. In fact, when I was a single person, it wouldn't be uncommon for me to actually wipe out my stainless steel sink because I really liked the fact that it didn't have water spots on it. So I know, a little crazy, but that's me. My wife, on the other hand, is kind of on the opposite end. She certainly could leave out magazines and newspapers on a countertop for weeks and not even notice. She was, would be totally happy and was happy making a big dinner, leaving the dishes all over the counter, and then worrying about them the next day. Again, nothing wrong with any of that. It's just that we were on two opposite ends of the spectrum. Now, I will tell you that I found the clutter in the house very disturbing. But I felt, in my mind, well, that's just me. I'm kind of neurotic. So I really kind of just let it go for decades. And my idea was happy wife, happy life. So I just said, okay, you'll get used to it. It's okay, it's fine. And in many instances in life, we do get used to those things, those kind of things that are different from what we're used to. But this was one thing that I really never got used to. It was sort of like a little pebble in my shoe and it never caused a callus, it just caused blisters. And I could shift it around a little bit and ignore it, but boy, I'd get another blister again. That's how this event was. So a number of years ago, probably three, four years ago, I realized that it really was upsetting me a lot and I would have to enter into a dialogue with my wife about this. Now, think about this. This is a behavior that's been going on for decades. My kids had adopted the behavior. I was the lone wolf, wolf coming in saying, I want change. This was not a one and done deal. This was many conversations over many months and not all pleasant handshakes at the end of them. I'm not talking about screaming matches here, but a lot of hurt feelings on both sides. But eventually, through just persistence, we were able to reach a compromise. What was that compromise, you may ask? Well, pretty simple. I clean the majority of the house now. It doesn't bother me. I don't mind cleaning. But the family's role is that they don't create unnecessary mess. And so that means that when they're done with the newspaper, the last person puts it in recycling. If someone uses a dish, a, a dish, for instance, in between mealtimes, they wash it out and put it in the little draining area. 
simple stuff like that makes me happy. They have a clean house. I do a lot of the work to clean the house and it's, it's turned out to be a win-win situation because I was honest. Well, let's look at some how I was maybe dishonest or I needed to be more honest even to myself. So as you may know, if you've read some of my blog stuff or looked at some of this early, these earlier videos in the series, that my childhood was not the best. It was not, a, it was not the best. But I've been incredibly fortunate as an adult. Sort of like when I sort of took control of my life, good things started to happen. And I've had a lot of successes in my life. Now, I would tell you that I'm not, in my mind, a competitive person, but it does seem that I like to be on top. So maybe my mind and they're a little bit off here a little bit. And so I liked being the guy that set the curve on the tests in college. I liked going to a top medical school. I liked becoming chief resident of psychiatry. I liked becoming medical directors of programs and a founder of a clinic and blah, 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 blah. I'm not going to give you all this stuff because I'm sure you could care less. But the point is, I liked achieving those things. So where does this conversation lead? Well, I have a whole flip side to me that I kind of buried through my pursuit with science. And it's a creative side. I also am an enthusiast. If you watch this channel, you know that I love photography. I love to write. I love to create things. I love to cook. I love to do anything that involves creating something, teaching something, learning something, any of that kind of stuff, technology. I just love that stuff. But I've always had to put that on sort of the back burner because most of my life was dedicated to work and family. And there wasn't a lot of left time, uh, time left over. So yes, I would do some creative things like this little YouTube channel. And I would do some things like my creative writing blog, drmikekuna.com. And I've been doing a podcast since 2006, now with my wife, Psychiatric Secrets Revealed. Um, and so I do these creative things and a lot of other creative things too, but I'm doing them in little tiny slices. This video will probably take me 15 minutes to record and another 15 minutes to put some titles in and it's off and running. So not a lot of dedication, but sincerity. I hope you realize there's sincerity. Now, I have this idea that in December, when I partially retire, that I'm going to have all this time. And I've had ideas now for years about things that I've wanted to do, writing projects that I've wanted to do, photography projects that I wanted to do. I mean, all sorts of different things that I want to do. And I'll be honest with you. If you do these things and no one says, hey, that's a good job, or no one reads what you wrote, or no one admires your picture, kind of lets you down sort of flat. But I have to be honest with myself that that very well could happen. How do I know that? Well, I do this YouTube channel. How many subscribers do I have? Less than 3,000. There are cat videos that have millions of views per video. I have less than 2 million views total for all of my videos. Not very much. I have a podcast, and yeah, I will get a couple thousand people listening to it every month. But it's certainly, it's been going on forever. It's really not like I have this giant, massive audience of people listening to it. I would say they are mild successes, and I do them because I love them. But what's going to happen when I devote more time to them? Am I really going to be able to move up enough notches to create something that's going to be better, better produced, or maybe even abandon these sorts of things and move into a different direction and make something that's really good. Well, I don't know, but I have to be honest with myself and say there's a better than average chance that that will not be the case. And it's like, oh, oh, that kind of stinks. But if I flip things around a little bit and I admit that, that I can face it and I can look at other possibilities. Because the fact is, I really do love doing these things. I really do have a passion to create and to teach and to learn. I, it's just something ingrained in me. And so I'm going to have to then switch that over to, hey, if three people read something that I've written and they like it, maybe it will help one of those three people. If uh, I get a thousand views on one of my videos, which would be a pretty good situation, by the way, then at least a few people may have learned something from one of my videos and really reframe things in a way to make it compatible and motivate myself to create, which is what my passion is, as opposed to going for those numbers and going for that popularity contest, because it doesn't seem like I really will have the ability to do that. 
So by being honest to myself, I'm not setting myself up for failure. I'm setting myself up for success. And I'm also evaluating what that success is, how it's determined. So I had a bunch of other examples, but I thought I would bore you out of tears with them. So I'm going to leave you with those examples and really ask you to think about honesty in your life. So obviously, if you're a chronic liar, you've got to think long and hard, but you're probably not going to change your behavior. But if you're looking at these subtle forms of dishonesty, you might want to examine them and see how you can communicate better and get your needs met better and, and be more expressive about what you want and what your goals are. So many times people swallow those either because they don't want to get into conflict with someone or they don't want to admit their own shortcomings. And the end result is not good. The more information that you have, the more likely you are to steer your course. Just imagine a person sailing a ship. Well, they, they might say, well, I think I want to go in that direction. How good is that? If they say, well, no, now I have a compass. Hey, better. Now I have a compass and a, max, a map. And what do they call those things? A sextant? This is before G, GPS. Okay, now they can find their course. The more information we have, the more likely we are to make change in our life that's going to be meaningful and practical. So what are the, what are the other rules that I would warn you about? Well, being honest and truthful is not permission to annihilate someone. How many times have you heard about that person who says, you know, I'm just being honest and they completely attack a person and make them feel about this big. They're being shits. Don't be a shit. Also, being honest doesn't mean that you're an open, open vessel and that you're telling everyone every deep secret in your life and every intimate detail. That clerk at the grocery store doesn't need to know everything about you. I like, I maybe if you choose to tell the information, that's fine, but they don't need to know that. But also, other people in your life don't need to know every single detail about you. You can choose to share this with this person and that with that person. You can sh choose to keep some things to yourself, but do those things in a conscious way, not in a way that's preventing you from moving forward. It's also important to realize that it's not just the me show. So here I am saying, here you have to express yourself and express your needs and get your needs met. What I'm not saying is, is that it's okay to ignore the needs of other people. I hope you got that in my example. Because we're all one big happy family here, and it's not just what about me, what about me, but that's, that's, that is a complete disaster, right? When you just think about yourself, you wind up being unhappy, and the people around you wind up being unhappy. So it is about compromise and listening and really realizing in your life that there are certain things that are completely who cares about, there are certain things that are negotiable, and there's certain things that are just, you just got to have them your way. And that's for all of us. But don't forget, you're dealing with another person who has those same three criteria. So you got to be cognizant of that and aware and not just think, well, Dr. Mike said, I can just get whatever I want because, hey, this is what I want to do. No, I'm not saying that at all. We are all equals, and I want to be as equal as you. I want to be as equal as my wife, but my wife wants to be as equal as I am. And you want to be as equal as I am. So we all have to kind of work together on that, in that sort of philosophy and move forward. And I have told you since I've made this much more conscious effort about being honest, and it, it's impacted me in my work life, it's impacted me with my kids, it's impacted me in my friendships, I've just been a lot happier. And how has it impacted my weight loss? It's just one more thing. Because when you're unsatisfied, when I would come home and the house would be not up to the standards that I would like, it would make me anxious. How would I react with that anxiety? I probably would eat sugar. That's what I would do. Someone else might have a drink. Someone else might gamble. Someone else might do some other behavior that's really costing them in the long run. You know, that little bit of pleasure, whole lot of pain philosophy. Or certainly not moving in a direction where they could grow, maybe make a relationship better in their life, not worse. Maybe uh, just improve the quality of their life. So with that, I'd like to say, uh, hopefully this was helpful. I have one more. That's six out of six uh, out of the series, and then we'll move on to other things. Remember, this is a very diverse channel. I love teaching, so you'll hear some teaching. I love looking, I'm comparing, so you'll hear some product reviews. I love offering my thoughts for whoever wants to hear them. All that jazz. So this is one of those mixed channels that's going to give you a little bit of everything. Mostly, it's going to give you a lot about who am I. Not that you really want to know. Anyway, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. 
If you like my channel, please subscribe. I'd like to get over that 3,000 mark. I don't know if it'll ever happen, but I'd like to do that. And, oh, and um, I have that experimental writing blog, drmikekuna.com, D-R-M-I-K-E-M-I-K-E, wait, D-R-M-I-K-E-K-U-N-A.com. And that podcast, it's uh, up once a month. It's savings, uh, not same savvy, it's Psychiatric Secrets Revealed. It's myself and my wife. I'm a board certified psychiatrist. She's a licensed clinical psychologist. And we talk about stuff. Take care, everyone.